Dennis Prager, thrice divorced. I only say that because he's such a moralist, and it's pretty impressive uh, to get divorced three times. And um, good for those women. And, yeah. Yes. I hope uh, none of them had prenups. And um, he he is a moralist who is you know in the business of telling other Jews that you're not good Jews. And um, but in this instance, he's talking about how thirsty he is to be debated on the Tim Pool show. Uh, incidentally, uh, here is Dennis Prager. I'll give you another interesting thing that people don't reflect on. We ache to have ache. them on our shows. We ache to debate them, but they won't debate us and they won't come on our shows and they won't us have us on their shows. I have offered tens of thousands of dollars to any <laughs> left-wing columnist on the New York Times to debate me anywhere they want. They could choose the moderator. They could choose the audience. Mm -hmm. And serious money, and that's 99% of the New York Times columnists are, are leftists. Maybe right. there are three that are not, not <laughs> left. Uh, but they would uh, never do it. I ache to debate them. I would raise a hundred thousand. Pause it for one second. I just want to be clear. Ninety-nine percent. Three of them are not. That means like there's ninety what ninety-seven ninety uh, ninety-seven. Yeah. Uh, Noted leftist David no, Brooks. Be more like a hundred, like a hundred and fifteen. Uh, yeah. 120 oh, yeah. other New leftist. York Times columnists. Yeah, and to the yeah. extent the Weird New York math. Times uh, um, people are 99% anything, it's Ivy League educated. Yeah. <laughs> I ache for leftists to actually be uh, in the New York Times editorial board. Can you stop saying ache? It's just like, I mean, it's it's dude, like keep it in Gross. your pants. Keep going. I'm I could throbbing. probably raise that oh, to have God. Ta-Nehisi Coates <laughs> or Ibram X. Kendi debate Larry Elder. Okay, it would end the All right, career pause it. of Ta-Nehisi Coates. No, notice like that those are the people that he selects. Right? Those aren't New York Times writers. <laughs> Not, and also it's notable that like they make it about them being black for the most part. But well, it's I mean he's like I will set up a debate between this these two black people and this other black guy, Larry Elder. And be like like a like a like I'm a fight promoter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don King, Dennis <laughs> yeah. But let's continue on here. It would end the career of Tanahisi Coates or Ibrahim X. And they Kendi. know that they would Fire be regarded up. as the moral and intellectual frauds that they are. Yeah. Larry would wipe the floor with them. The key to their success is not enabling us to have an audience. Ah, uh, okay. And since this was done at uh, Tim's studio, I wrote, adding, Tim Cast knows what lengths he would go to not even be on the same stage as me. Right, Tim? Now, that was just a direct message to Tim without having to go into his DMs. So let's ignore that for now. I'll explain that one day. This thing got right there. 10,000 10, likes. <clears throat> Almost 11,000 likes. <laughs> they never, ever, ever responded. Hmm. Like they're pretending like they hadn't seen it. Which is, you know, not true. Which is obviously not true. Hey. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Hi. Hey, uh, so I noticed, I think it was Friday, that the uh, PragerU Twitter account said that the left on debate, I guess you said that on uh, Tim Cast podcast, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't sure if you were aware of Sam Speeder. He uh, responded to you, said that he's available. He's the host of The Majority Report, which is a progressive podcast. Um, yeah. How many, uh, how many people know the name Sam? I, I, I'm, this is the first I hear of it. Cedar, you said? I'm sorry. S-E-A-D-E-R? Yeah. So Sam Cedar. So how many people do you feel? Uh, the reason I'm asking, I'm not being cute. The reason I'm asking is uh, if I'm going to debate someone on the left, they can't use it as a stepping stone to become famous. I, I have to debate somebody on the left who has the s similar audience as I have in writing and in speaking, podcast, PragerU, as, in other words, I gave the example of any New York Times left-wing columnist. Mm -hmm. So I, I, otherwise, everybody who, who does a podcast or, or, who, who, or who writes uh, a, a column 
uh, should say, oh, oh, I would love to debate Dennis Prager. So he's, he's not telling the truth. I'm a leftist, and here he won't debate me. I, I get letters like that all the time. Why won't you debate me? So that's the only reason. Yeah. So, so I need I need you to understand. It's, I'm glad you called. I thank you. <laughs> oh. I mean, you didn't really give him a chance to clarify who you right. were. At well, the end. yes, because he was already prepared for this type of thing. Uh, now, let's be clear. This is a game he's playing. He is being cute. He's afraid. He knows he's afraid. Dennis, if you're not watching this. I would say to the guy on your show who's watching it, clip this and give this to Dennis. Dennis, you're afraid. You know you're afraid. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that the people in the New York Times, you want to compare Ta-Nehisi Coates to Dennis Prager? Are you kidding? Bro. Are you serious? This guy has international acclaim. Outside of the incredibly old demographic that you serve, to the extent that you have anybody younger, it's only because you've had people on who, like Dave Rubin at a time, well, like Dave Rubin's number's no different than ours. People don't know who Dave Rubin is. You're afraid. You should just admit that to yourself. It will help you. It will help you recover from whatever it is that your, your, your ails you. It's, it's aging you. Too early, Dennis. Now, listen, if you need more information about me, if you want to hear my credits, I was recently in a movie that got over $25 million at the box office. Hmm. Hmm. Better be careful. Are we giving uh, Dennis Prager too much of a leg up because of how big you are? I, know. I mean... Uh, Can't be a stepping stone for us. But, for, for Dennis, you. we can do it in any way that you think will not help my career. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. You can do it. You do it masked and anonymous. Uh, yes. In fact, yes. If you want to bring me on and not actually say my name. Yeah. I, I will wear a mask. And the only people who will know this are the people who hear me now. I already don't. And know. obviously, that's not many. So I will go on. I will go on with a bag over my head. Yeah, go on and shadow like, like you're in the witness comic. protection program. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You can dim Deep throat. You can dim my lights and my voice obviously people aren't going to recognize. And you can call me Steve Jones or whatever it is you want to call from the Steve Jones show so that I don't get any any value to my career. And that way, you can make sure that you're not uplifting, and we can just make it about the ideas. Just the ideas, pure ideas, no identities at all. No identities. Just floating minds in space. Yes, and you can just say I'm representative of the, the, the floating uh, progressive orb, the woke progressive mob. Now, if you want to help Dennis hear this offer, where I will come on in any way that he deems will not in any way Help my career. 877-243-776 is live, his number. Live right. Monday through Friday, noon to 3 p.m. Eastern time. So it says we are always happy to hear from you. They're always happy to hear. You can also email him at Dennis at DennisPrager.com, but people won't be aware that he's being made aware. So right. really, make a phone call. Record it, obviously. Um, and I will say this. If you're a fan of Dennis Prager's, our number is 646-257-3920. Mm. And if you want to talk to me, you can call. And if you feel like, oh, we're going to, we don't do screening. And if you feel like you're going to get lost in the 25 calls in the line, send, uh, send an IM with your area send code an IM and with say your I'm a Prager to, fan. Uh, yeah, majority yeah. F sitting at my desk. And I get a message from a, um, frequent caller on this program who people might be familiar with and he says i am on hold for the dennis prager show can i conference you in and of course i said yes and freaked out and was like everybody turn on the cameras and, and whatnot and this is what happened first we're going to show the um this is the prager feed Yep, and then so we will show the behind-the-scenes feed. From Salem Radio Networks. And the necessity of God, what's the difference? 
Uh, Yakima, Washington. Ronald, hello. <laughs> hey, D-Man. This is uh, Ronald. How are you? Well, thank you. Pause it for one second. So now, I don't watch Dennis Prager enough or at all to know whether everybody refers to him as the D-Man. I don't think that so. Was just, I, I, <laughs> I think that was I editorialized. Was a, a stylistic <laughs> choice by our caller, Ronald, from Yakima, Washington. Um, he doesn't use his last name, but I believe it's Ray Gunn. Uh, continue. I've got a son that uh, he kind of went off the deep end going to, going to college. And I think that uh, what you said earlier is a good point, that the clergy and the parents don't do a good enough job presenting the case. And one of the ways that we failed to do that is by really debating people on the other side, you know, and, and really presenting the argument. So that's why I was wondering if maybe you wanted to debate Sam Cedar. He's on the line with me right now. Okay, so let me let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> Sam Cedar uses my name to get publicity. Pause for one second. Now you could hear me say hi, Dennis, and then I was immediately dropped. I of course, uh, you know, continued talking. Didn't know at the time. Um, let's go back. And do we have the other one, or do we need to? Play I, I think we should out? play a little bit of how Dennis decides to respond to you before okay. we go right. and say okay, what you had said to him. Yeah. Uh, Sam Cedar there we go. At college and I think that uh, what you said earlier is a good point that the clergy and the parents don't do a good enough job presenting the case and one of the ways that we failed to do that is by really debating people on the other side you know and, and really presenting the argument so that's why I was wondering if maybe you wanted to debate Sam Cedar he's on the line with me right now Okay, so let me let me tell you something. Uh, Sam Cedar uses my name to get publicity. I made this point <laughs> the other time. The guy lied about me, uh, claimed that I was divorced three times, said it like it was a truism. I was divorced twice. It's not a little thing. He lies about me, and he uses me. Whenever he mentions me, he gets far more hits than when he doesn't mention me. I don't know who he is. Well, I'd say 1% of my Somebody listeners does. know who he is. And I would say 80% of his listeners know who I am. Okay. It's an old trick. Let me raise my stature by going on the same stage as someone with stature doesn't work with me, unfortunately for the person, but fortunately for the public. I have debated really, really classy atheists, <laughs> the, the best ones. It's online. Christopher Hitchens and I debated a number of times. He cites, he cites it in his own autobiography yeah. before he sadly passed away. That's probably where it can end it there. Okay. Now, so, a couple of things. All right. First off, I need to issue a correction. I was indeed off and misstated. I was off by 33% the amount of divorces that Dennis Prager has gone through. He has been married three times, divorced only twice. Um... I obviously said that he had been divorced three times because being divorced three times is so much more representative of the way I feel about Dennis Prager than if I was to say he's been divorced two times. However, the fact is he's only been divorced two times. He's married three times. Uh, I just want to say that right, right off the bat. It's big of you. Thank you. It is a correction that I issue. I've been living with this, uh, with this, with this hanging over my head, and it is, it is. I have to say, a relief to get it off my chest. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I was 100 percent confident or co uh, conscious of uh, that I had said three as opposed to two. Um, I also want to say that. Contrary to uh, the D-man's um, claim, we don't really do so well when we mention Dennis Prager. No. 
he's not, he doesn't really perform very well. It's more uh, of a labor of love. It's more of a labor of love. And the thing is, it's also a weird thing that he's saying I'm sharing his stage with the phone callers because am I elevating callers dramatically when they call? I mean, that's why I called in on his platform. How does that help me? However, with that said, the day after I did that, I was walking around out uh, on the streets of uh, Brooklyn couldn't go 15 feet without getting stopped. Weren't you the voice on Dennis Prager's show the other day? Didn't you say, hi, Dennis? I had to sign a lot of autographs because of it. But here is where I want to take issue with what Dennis Prager said. He said that he has debated many classy atheists. And that is proof that he doesn't need to debate me. Now, I think his assessment of me being unclassy is uh, arguable, but I am willing to stipulate that I do not have the class of the people that he normally debates. But his characterization of me as, a, as an atheist, I don't perceive myself as an atheist per se. I don't have a very strong belief in God, but I'm not an agnostic. I certainly wouldn't debate him on the existence of God. Really, it would be more uh, about his uh, fundamentalism that I'm more interested in. But let's, uh, let's play uh, the behind the scenes thing just to get a sense of yeah. how much work I put into that and how unclassy he really was. I went onto his platform, onto his phone call, he accepts phone calls. There was no reason for him to hang up on me in that way. It was unclassy. Try it, my friends. $19.95 for three weeks. Really? Ronald Reagan has me on hold, has three-wayed me in with Dennis Prager. <laughs> it's me sped up. The Dennis Prager Show returns in five seconds. Speed up a little bit more. Two huge answers. One is that they swim in a, a secular, even anti-religious sea. Is that a little more? And part of the other is the failure of religious parents and clergy to teach. The case, explain the case for religion. And it begins not with God's existence, but with God's necessity. The number of people who believe in God in this world... And uh, we're just about there. Their values, their thinking, their moral behavior is enormous. But you start with the calamity of secularism. That's the first argument. Even if God exists, but you don't understand the necessity of God. This guy talks slower than me. I know. <laughs> I went back twice. Uh, Yakima, Washington, days. Ronald, hello. <laughs> Hey, D-Man, this is uh, Ronald. How are you? Well, thank you. So I've got a son that uh, he kind of went off the deep end going to, going to college. And I think that uh, what you said earlier is a good point, that the clergy and the parents don't do a good enough job presenting the case. And one of the ways that we failed to do that is by really debating people on the other side, you know, and, and really presenting the argument. So... That's why I was wondering if maybe you wanted to debate Sam Cedar. He's on the line with me right now. Hi, Dennis. I'm here. Sure. And I would contend that part of the reason why <laughs> folks have uh, not um, are, are less religious is because they find that your brand of religion oppressive. Oh, shoot. 
He hung up on us. He hung up on us. <laughs> I'm just wording it on my phone. Uh, pretty good segue, do you think? No, I thought you did a good job there. Uh, I thought you did a pretty good job. We're going to be on conference call with maybe uh, Prager. How much time do we got? Hello? Hello? Is this Ron Reagan? Yeah, we're on in a minute. Prager we're show. on in about a on minute. On the Salem Radio okay. Network. We're talking to some break. It's one minute and 15 minutes. This is a great birthday gift. Thank yeah, you, Reagan. You want me to just go right into it? I told him that my son is in college and he's in Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. And my name is Ron. Ron. I'll just let you be Ron. Okay. You want me to do it with Ron? Yeah. Let's do it this way. The Dennis Prager I'm Show. I'm just going to mute my on microphone. Salem Radio Network. We turn some break in 45 seconds. Happy birthday, you big idiot. Oh, thank you. It's a good birthday present. has happened to the Democrats. The Dennis Prager Show on the Salem Radio Network. Return some break. 1-8 Prager 776-877-2433-777. Albany, Oregon. Ron, hello. Uh, hi, uh, Dennis. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, I, I think I told your, your screener that uh, my, my kid is in college, and there are protests going on there, and needless to say, Thanksgiving was a little bit rough. Go on. Well, um, my, uh, my child, I don't want to say the, the, the college that they go to because I, I you know, I, I don't want them uh, to be chased down or anything. But uh, my concern is that my son uh, doesn't appreciate what's going on in Israel at all and uh, doesn't understand what the dynamics are there. And it is uh, increasingly a problem is what's going on in these campuses. That's right. Um, Anti-Semitism is a problem uh, in this country. It is rising. I'm not sure if I subscribe totally to the idea that it's a function of secularism because, you know, obviously the Spanish Inquisition, we had a lot of anti-Semitism that existed before any type of uh, secular movement. In, in the United States it is. I make it clear in the column. You're right. American Christianity was totally different from European Christianity. But I mean, this was a Judeo Christianity. It was pro Jewish. That's why I read to you John Adams, who was a committed Christian. Well, that's true. That Jefferson but, I mean, and, and Jefferson, go on. Well, I can tell you that. I mean, just you know, I mean, uh, when my my uh, my my parents and my grandparents came over uh, in the eighteen hundreds, uh, they had to change their name. They couldn't get insurance. This was not a function. That they were very. Uh, they were very pious. Oh, so you're, you're Jewish. Okay, that's interesting. So the fact is, however, that compared, to, you're right, compared to a truly perfect society, it was a failure. Compared to every other society, why did they flee their society and come to America? If you would have asked your grandparents, are you happy you came to America, even though it was harder to get insurance? They probably would have laughed at you. Oh, well, no, of course. They, they left because of programs, but they weren't secular in, in Russia at that time or Lithuania. No, or you're Venice right. I, or... I said I've said all of my life to American Jews, my fellow Jews, that the European Christianity was not the same as American Christianity. This, these are the Christians that put Torah, uh, Torah script on, on the Liberty Bell. Right. That may, had you study Hebrew, that, that said the greatest contributions were made by Jews, like I read to you from John Adams. This was a different country. This was a different form of Christianity. Well, I agree. I mean, I agree. I mean, I, you know, you have someone like John Hagee speaking at the, um, the rally uh, for Israel, I think, was frankly an abomination. I mean, I wasn't for, uh, for uh, John Hagee speaking there. He has a record. I was. I was. Well, I even John McCain. Me. I thought it was a great choice. I know him he, very well. Back in a moment. Okay. The Dennis Prager Show returns 
in five seconds. Relief Factor has a new product, and it's called Sleep. And guess what it does? I'll give you a moment here to think about it. Sean is baffled. It's fascinating. Sean, I don't understand. It's sleep, sleep. Hello, sleep. Folks, a lot of you have problems falling asleep or staying asleep. My heart goes out to you. It's not a problem I've ever had. I'm very lucky, and I know it. But if you need to, this is a great product. On occasion that I have taken it, like, for example, when I went to London and I wanted to sleep on the plane, this thing is fantastic. Anything Relief Factor does, I'm a big fan of. So, if you need to sleep or stay asleep, try it. Go to relieffactor.com and order sleep for restorative, regenerative sleep. Relieffactor.com. So my column this week is essentially that when America was more Christian, Jews were more secure. So there are two issues with my caller. This is a really important call. I'm very you called because I, I have a lot of thoughts on what you're saying. So this is uh, Ron in Oregon. And there are two issues. One is that his son... He uh, is a Jewish family, and his son has been participating in anti-Israel protests at his college. And the other is that he doesn't fully agree with me because look, after all, look at all the anti-Semitism in, in Europe, which was done by Christians. And he's absolutely right. But as I've said all of my life, American Christianity was not European Christianity, and Jews. The best place Jews have ever lived outside of their own land has been the United States of America. So your last comment was that you were distressed that at the rally in Washington for Israel, they had Pastor Hagee speak, correct? Yes, that's right. I mean, I was never, and the, I never totally agreed with John McCain about all things, but when he um, distanced himself in 2008 from uh, Hagee, I thought that was the right thing to do. And the reason? Well, I don't think the idea that, and this is what Hagee believes, obviously not what I believe, or I would imagine not what you believe, is that um, Hitler was sent by God to push Jews to Israel. And, I mean, I understand the Christian prophecy that uh, we as Jews are a part of that, but not necessarily in the best way. But... Um, I guess my biggest concern is um, we just had the, uh, the, the greatest attack on Jews since the Holocaust take place. And I look at Israel as a place that was um, founded at least in part to protect Jews. And I think that after 75 years, what we're looking at is a situation where that project has failed and I think in part it failed because of the way that um, Israel has gone about it. Okay, so we you know, now entered a third uh, third arena. They're all related. Exactly. Let me just say this about John Hagee. John, first of all, I never, ever judge people on the basis of their beliefs. I'm sure you're annoyed when Christians think you're going to hell because you don't believe in Christ. So why are you annoyed with John Hagee for his religious beliefs? If well, indeed that's what he said. I have reviewed it. It's not fully clear to me. But let's say he said that. God sent Hitler. My father, who was an Orthodox Jew and fought, uh, fought Hitler in, in the U.S. Navy for three years, believed that God sent Hitler because he couldn't believe that the Holocaust just happened and God watched it. There, there, there are well, a lot that's of Jews. A, yes, uh, but that is a that is okay. A, so, so, so fine. So, so, what exactly? How, how remarkably different was my father's view? I don't agree with my father, but it doesn't matter. It, it is. It, it, I, as I said, I don't. I judge beliefs, but I don't judge people by their beliefs. So, John Hagee has been one of the most pro-Jewish, pro-Israel figures in American in American life. He has founded the largest organization of Christians. It is the Kufi 
Christians well, United yes, for no, Israel. I know I that. To, but Dennis, okay. that's, that so actually relates to my other point. Good? Because, because, no, because it, I do think it, that yeah. intent, I do think intent is important here. So it is true that we, we uh, you know, that Israel has a lot of support from uh, Kufi and other uh, Christian Zionists. But they want the Jews there so that they go through hellfire. And I also know that, you know, the Netanyahu, That's not true. the Netanyahu, that is true. The Net, I, I know, well, that is I exactly the prophecy that true. Hagee is talking about. And, no, no, no. And okay. I will also say this, with Netanyahu, okay. with Netanyahu okay. also making common cause with, um, with Yes, because he's right making wing. common cause because the greatest support in America for his country is coming from Christian Zionists. Well, but I think that's problematic in the end. Cause with them? Well, I'm, I'm trying I'm to explain. Sorry. I'm trying to explain because I think what it breeds is a type of, of uh, singular nationalism in Israel which has left Jews unsafe. The, the road so, that could have so been taken believe, with Zionists... Okay. So you we know that there was that a strand Israel of Zionist is thought. Okay, we, so no, no, understand. not Israel. I'm saying a certain elements within Israel, because we know there was Zionist thought, but starting in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, where the idea of a, uh, a multi-ethnic, multi-religious democracy could have taken hold. Folks like Boober yeah, okay. and Hannah Arendt uh, spouses. Well, Instead, just, we have a fascist... Don't uh, be shocked that your child has taken your uh, ideas to their conclusion. Oh, Dennis! <laughs> it's weird that you had to cut me off. The Dennis Prager Show. I'm just going to hang out so you look great. Don't mind. We turn to work <laughs> in two minutes and 45 seconds. Oh, I don't know. I think he might be, I think he might be done with it. Yeah. I get the sense he was. He definitely cut me off. Leafactors.com. Read what people have written about this product, which relieves pain in muscles and joints. I know it. I endorse it. I use it. The Living Martyr uses it. My wife uses it. In fact, my wife used it before I ever heard of it. That's why I actually agreed to even promote it years ago. Because she told me, oh, it's fantastic for her knee pain. It's so good, she sometimes forgets to take it. And then she doesn't take it and the knee pain comes back. Try it for three weeks. doesn't work in three weeks. The bankers say you should cancel your order. Because it probably won't work for you if it doesn't work in three weeks. Go to relieffactor.com, 1995 for three weeks. That's it. You should definitely try it. Relieffactor.com, 800-500-8384. Okay, so just a final word here. I rarely keep somebody on so long, but I thought that that was valuable. So I just want to say, and this is, God knows, I, I, I thank you for your call and your openness. Thank you. But with your views... With regard to Israel, it, it, it's not shocking that your son would have participated in anti-Israel demonstrations at college. Well, I, I know you wouldn't, and I fully appreciate that, but he, he didn't come from a home that made, made peace with, with Israel as a national Jewish project. Well, I think that's not, I don't think that's true, actually. I mean, my, my, uh, certainly my, much of my Hebrew school, uh, you know, and I at that point was more uh, conservative than, than Orthodox. Uh, but much of my Hebrew uh, schooling was, was oriented towards I Israel. Many of my uh, teachers were, um, yeah, but were that's former irrelevant. It's, it's your views. Well, look, you said, but all I'm saying is, I'm looking at this as a practical flawed. matter, though, uh, Dennis, because as a practical matter, if the part of the Zionist project was to provide a safe home for Jews, I, uh, I, I mean, and surely you know this as well. Um, we have Israelis now who are in bomb shelters four times a day, and that it has not worked. The peace and security for Jews as a, as a single ethno-national state has not worked. So, On that, so therefore, I'm, you uh, believe Jews would be more secure if there weren't a Jewish state and it was just a Jewish and Muslim state? And, and Christian, 
I mean, I think the, you know, and the, uh, yeah, and, and, there are so few and, Christians there. Okay, well, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, of course. It's so you, you believe Jews would be more secure with majority Arab rule? I, I, I think absolutely a multi-ethnic uh, uh, society right. could be set up. I mean, listen, this is the same thing okay. that people said All about right, South right, Africa. Look, I got to leave it that because we've talked well, so long. Okay. Me. Well, uh, Dennis, I really appreciate you having this conversation let, uh, let with me. The uh, listener decide. Thank you. But I, I think it. You need to be honest with yourself. If you believe that I am being honest with Zionist myself, project Dennis, is a failure. It, it, it is not that surprising that your son would have demonstrated against Israel on his campus. Well, I mean, I wouldn't characterize the uh, demonstration St. Petersburg, against Florida. Corey, oh. hello. Ah. All right. Yes, hello, Dennis. Um, since October seventh. I've been to four or five Catholic churches for Sunday Mass. All right, hold on. And not one just... time has the priest mentioned in his home. Uh, I guess, uh, oh, he, he left. All right. Reagan hung up. We got yep. the uh, held over two commercial breaks. I mean, I thought he was taking commercials. I got news for you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to really know. Like, I did too. <laughs> I can't believe you got on that long. And he, he's, you've spoken to him before, right? Like, he supposedly knows your voice. Well, I, I mean, I don't You got on for like, like a second man. the one time, and he, uh, he uh, hung up immediately. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, pretty amazing. I mean, it was nice to be able to reach his audience. And, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think I. I went super hard, no. but to, to have that long of a time, uh, <laughs> I feel bad now because my son's not in college. Yeah. He's in elementary school. And your name is but, not Ron. And my name is not Ron. And no wonder. So Ron is no one of my wonder. nicknames. But, you know, if Dennis wants to avoid this kind of deception, he can just come on the majority report and debate Sam long form without yeah. those kinds of obstacles. Wow. I'll tell you something. There was... Uh, 12 minutes of, or nine minutes, uh, 10 minutes of ads in what was yeah literally like 30 seconds. I thought he did it to avoid and end the conversation, no. but he was actually just taking scheduled ads. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, Keep getting them checks, Dennis.